All right, everyone. So it is finally that time where we are going to be going over the curriculum that we will be using for this year um, or this next coming school year. Last year, I was actually very happy with all of the curriculum that we got. There was only a couple of things here and there that we actually didn't use or we started using and we didn't really enjoy. So we ended up stop like stopping it completely. But I did make some changes this year to the curriculum. Um, is specifically with language arts. So we did enjoy last year's language arts tremendously. Um, I really like the reader that were, in, that were included within the language arts program. It was beautiful. It was three readers and there was a bunch of stories in each reader. But this year I actually ended up changing because I felt like I wasn't sure if it was the way I was teaching or the way my son was learning, but I felt like there was just something missing. Like he was getting the concepts, but I felt like he could have gone more into the concepts and learned it a little bit more. Um, once again, I loved the language arts program. It was all about reading, but I just felt like for my son, I wanted him to do a little bit more learning. So I actually researched quite a bit. I watched a ton of videos. I spoke to some homeschool moms and one of the programs that I ended up finding was a Becca. Now with a Becca, they do teach it to your child, it is a teacher online teaching to your child and then your child just kind of follows along with it. So I figured this would be a great time because while he's doing his Abeka program language arts in the morning, my I can go ahead and uh, focus on my other child. I may do this in different sections just because there are quite a bit of stuff that I ordered. Last year I went through Timberdoodle, this year I'm kind of all over the place with the curriculum that I ordered, um, but it all has a purpose. So let's just go ahead and get started. The first thing that came with the Becca program is this tote and it says teaching what happens when what you do is com combined with what you love. And then it's a nice little tote and you can go ahead and put your books in there if you need to go somewhere, if you want to go to the park or something and just do your reading and language arts there. Here you have um, the readers and for the language arts program last year we had three readers but there were quite a bit of stories in each reader. Here you have a ton of readers, which is nice because then it's going to really help them um, develop the reading skills. So the first thing is handbook for reading. Then you have the primary Bible reader. The readers are fun with pets, tiptoes, stepping stones, secrets and surprises, Kind and Brave, Aesop's Fables, which this one I'm really excited about, Strong and True, Down by the Sea, and Animals in the Great Outdoors. And what I like about these readers is it's the reader, but it also contains questions for them to think about, to answer, to kind of go over. So that's the nice thing about these readers. And they are actually labeled 1A all the way to 1I. Um, so those are the readers that we will be using this year. All right, and for spelling we have the first grade writing tablet Which is essentially just a writing tablet. That's it. And there's about three of these included And to kind of go along with that. We also have the manuscript formations um, These are flashcards. So it kind of shows you how to form the actual manuscript letters they gave you the choice between manuscript and cursive and although I do want my son to learn cursive, I want him to kind of master manuscript spelling first before we move on to cursive. Okay, and then for spelling, there's also the spelling and poetry book. So it's just a bunch of little spelling words that you can do. And it doesn't just have spelling and fill in the blanks, it also has like little activities that they have to figure out, answers they have to um, figure out coloring and things like that. Then you have a writing with phonics manuscript and this is for penmanship and creative writing. And basically it's tracing and writing. So the other, um, the other writing tablet was just the actual writing tablet whereas this shows them how to trace the words, where they sh the letters should start, where they should end. Um, it has little dots at the top to show them where to start. So that is very nice. Okay, and then along with that, you have the language seat, wo seat work text. Um, and this is also just a workbook for them. 
to go over all the language and to fill in the blanks and to do different activities in. You also have the teacher manual for the language seat work text. And then with that, you have a letters and sounds, and this is also seat work text. So once again, they go over the sounds of the letters, they go over the sounds of words, how the vowels, what sounds the vowels make, um, just different sounds based on the words and the letters that are being used. And along with that, you also have a test. So that's the nice thing. You'll be able to see kind of how they're doing, um, how they're doing with the lessons, if they're understanding it, if they're not. And the nice thing about that is if they don't understand it, then you can go ahead and re-review it until they finally do understand it. So you have the, tech, the test and the test key. And then to tie all that, you also have the teacher key for the letters and sounds um, seat work. Okay, and then you have the answer key for all of the readers. So like I said, some of the readers after a section, they have questions, fill in the blanks, things you have to answer. So this is basically the answer key for anything that may be located in the readers. And that is it for Abeka. So um, all of basically with Abeka, I the only thing I did was language arts, writing, reading, phonics. Um, and everything else is through a different program. So for Rebecca, it's just basically language arts. Um, we may end up sticking with this. It just depends on how the school year goes. We'll see. This is just something new for me. So I think it will be good, but we will see. Okay, so moving on from language arts, I am now going to go into what I got from um, Christian Book. So for Christian Book, um, I got a whole bunch of curriculum. From there and it's curriculum that I've kind of been ordering and putting to the side for this next coming year so it's quite a bit so um, I'm just gonna start off with the main stuff that I got from there um, the main subjects that I got from there so for science we are actually going to be doing this adventures and creation so this is basically more about creation um, it does contain memory verses it has discussion starters that you can start with your little one in regards to creation and where you can dive deeper into topics of creation and then it also has activity pages to create a science notebook so um, it has it's basically 20 minutes per lesson so every lesson is about 20 minutes and you can do this three days a week so it basically lays down everything that you're gonna need for the program and what to teach and when to teach okay so one concept I really wanted to focus a little bit more on was geography I really wanted him to understand it to understand the concepts of geography and outline within the geography program and so I got the Evan Moore daily geography practice for grade one and this is Monday through Friday and with this I actually got the student practice book as well which just kind of dives a little bit more into detail so this one will kind of give a summary of what the subject is or the concept is that they're trying to teach this one's basically teaches and sees if they're actually learning the concept and retaining it so the concept kind of summary and this is just making sure they're retaining that information and then kind of going with that we're going to go to history so for history i actually um am doing the story of the world i'm sure you've seen it a couple times already but this seems to be kind of the main um history program it seems to be very well laid out um there's a lot of books that is recommended in this history book for you to purchase or check out at your local library to kind of dive deeper into the historical um, practices, the historical things that happen, which I am all for. I really believe that history is something that should be taught, retaught, relearned. Like, I just think history is very important for them to know, to understand, to comprehend that things happen in the past and we don't want them to happen in the future. And so it's very important to learn from history. It's very important to see what people did when when they did it, um, people's reactions. I think it is a very important subject. And so with that, we are using the story of the world. Um, this is for ancient times. So this goes over the earliest nomads to the last Roman Empire emperor. Um, I think with history, I'm going to be doing the story of the world, but I'm also going to be supplementing it with other stuff, um, depending on where we are in the book. So 
once again, like I said, history is something that I just think is very important for our children to learn and I think it's very important for them to know all parts of history, the good and the bad, um, especially the bad because I feel like with history, if you just focus on one or the other, you're bound to repeat it. So definitely, definitely, definitely an important subject. So once again, the story of the world. So I have the, um, what is this? Oh, this is the actual reading. So I have the reading where it's basically a CD, I believe. And then they'll go ahead and... Yeah, so this is basically like a CD. And you put it on and they will read the book to your child. We'll see if I end up using this. I think I may if it's like kind of a busy day where I just kind of want them to get the concept. But you have that. And then you also have um, the reading book. So this will be more for me to read if that's what we decide to do. You also have the test and answer key. So once again, to reassess if they are retaining the information and make sure that they are understanding the concepts or that he is. And then you also have the activity book. So this is just full of a bunch of activities for you to do. Also, how to review questions, do narration exercises. Um, it also has books that you can use for to kind of go deeper into the historical facts of that time. So a lot of good information in just this activity book. A lot of good information. And I'm actually very excited to get into this and to teach it. I feel like I'm going to learn quite a bit through it too. And then next, like I said, I ordered quite a bit, so it's going to take a bit. Um, I also ordered a bunch of building problem solving, building thinking skills, all of that good stuff because that's another thing I feel like is important. This is the critical and creative thinking activities. So it just goes through a bunch of activities and to help them um, think through the different problems. Um, so kind of just an example, like for the first page, we're going to be going through autumn. And it says, color the leaves to make a pattern, use yellow and orange. And then autumn, the weather, blank, the leaves, blank. Okay, and then to go along with that, I also have the Shell Education, 180 Days of Problem Solving for First Grade. So once again, it just basically is activities to help them learn to problem solve. The first one of this, it says, think about the problem, draw a picture to show what is happening, and then it gives you a problem, and then they have to show a picture and figure out the answer. This goes based off of weeks as well, and it's Monday through Friday. I did a couple of things from the Critical Thinking Company last or this last school year, and I loved it, and my son loved it, and he loved just that achievement of knowing that he got the right answer when he solved the problem was pretty great so he definitely loved going through these books and just figuring out the answer on his own and sometimes he needed some help from me but when he got it on his own the face the look on his face was just priceless he was just so excited and happy and he would tell his dad all about it so i know that he's going to really enjoy this as well so this one is um basically chapter one it will talk about describing shapes so for this first chapter, you're basically going to be going over the shapes, um, colors, describing them, how to tell from first from last, um, and first to third, left and right, which for him is something that I think he still needs to learn a little bit more of. He still struggles with the concept of left and right, so this will be a good reminder of that. And then I also, this is kind of not related to thinking skills, it's more on the math part, but I'll go to math next. So I figure since this is something I got from Christian book, I'll go ahead and just talk about it. This is The Life of Fred. This is the first book, the Apple's books. And it is basically, um, it is not a curriculum, but it's a good way to kind of go into math and understand it a little bit more it basically tells a story of a man named Fred and it leads to his life and it asks a bunch of mathematical questions that the child then has to solve and figure out so it'll go through the story it'll give you an example of what's happening in the story and then it's going to talk about something that you will have to do or have to solve and then they'll have to go ahead and solve that 
that problem. So this is more in regards to math. Along with math, I also got these um, learning wrap-ups. I got the subtraction and the addition. And so they'll basically wrap it up and just go, okay, well, what's 3 plus 1? 3 plus 1 equals 4. 6 plus 1 equals 7. And they'll have to learn to wrap it to the actual number. Um, so once again, I got the addition and subtraction for that. And then I got the grade one test prep. So this is um, basically once they are done with the school year essentially is what I understand from this. And they'll go ahead and take the test and you can see how they did, whether they understood the concepts that you taught. Um, granted, this is obviously not in rela relation to all the curriculum that I'm gonna be using, but it seems like it's more of an overview just in general for his age range, what they should know at that time. So that will be nice to kind of just figure out if he's learning or if he's achieving more than what those in his group should know. So that was it for Christian book. All right, so this is gonna be the end of the first part. I think I'm gonna do this into two different parts because this is going quite long. So this is the end of the first part. If you wanna see what else I got, go ahead and take a look at the second part that will be coming out shortly after this one. Um, I know that this seems like quite a bit of curriculum, but my son loves to learn. He really enjoys school. He's always asking about school. So I am not a minimalist by any means when it comes to homeschooling. I definitely try to nurture my son's strengths and try to help him with the weaknesses. So something that I really thought of before I bought all this stuff is I really thought of what I could help him, what I could do to help him learn more and to really foster that love of learning. So I'm very excited for this next coming school year, but if you guys want to see the next video, keep a lookout for that, and I will see you in my next one. Bye, everyone.